take that to Broadway. We can we can go to he can go to California with that song. You know. <laughs> I mean, you know, Yahshua is beautiful through song and through preaching. And uh, you know, Terry, I was saying you could take that to Broadway, man. Uh you can take it to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. And uh it's a beautiful song. And it expresses Yahweh. And that's what's so beautiful about it. But talking about a name, too. You know, we had to get Aaliyah name right because that's her name and she wants you to call her by her name. <laughs> get it right. That's what Yahweh want to, your Heavenly Father. And we seem to have his name right. We have no excuse because we breathe his name. We breathe his name. You don't believe me? Let's all do it together. Just breathe natural. Let's hear it. You're saying the name of Yahweh. We ain't saying Lord. We ain't saying God and we're not saying Jesus Christ. If you try to breathe Lord, you're not going to be able to do it because Yahweh is an inhale and an exhale. It's a two syllable. And this, this one right here, the Lord, is singular. And you cannot breathe Lord. You just can't do it. And you're not going to be able to breathe Jehovah comfortably <laughs> or God. Or Jesus Christ. But Yahweh, you can breathe it natural. That's your breath of life. When you stop breathing that name, guess what? You lose the spirit and you die. So, coming into this school, I am so thankful that uh, Yahweh came so simple <laughs> to break things down for us. You know, even my little Corey understand. He's four years old. You know, and he feels the power of Yahweh. He say, who do we call on? I say, you know. And he says, Yahshua. <laughs> you know, he knows in his heart. And, and I feel it, you know. And uh, just to give up some... Uh, some understanding to the world, you know, is so simple to understand it. And if you don't have an open mind, you'll think it's silly. The whole world think this is silly. Because, you know, we breathe the name Yahweh, all hogwash. Well, what about walking his name? All hogwash. It's all so many ways to explain Yahweh and there's so many facts and proofs or oh, they call it a coincidence no but Yahweh planned the whole thing right up here in heaven in pure spirit in himself he planned it and he want the whole world to know that his name is Yahweh and don't call him nothing else but his name, Yahweh. Don't call me nothing else. I'm just like my father. Don't call me nothing else but my name. And don't say that uh, names don't hurt you. Yes, they do. People kill for calling you out their name. They fight. They'll be your enemy for the rest of your life. You call them out of your name. It's fighting words. So that old saying that says sticks and stones may break my bones, 
but names that would never hurt me, that's a myth. That is a myth right there. That's untrue. Aaliyah, I bet you your age kids, y'all call each other names all the time, don't you? You get mad at each other, don't you? It's a natural thing. Because that's how Yahweh is too. He said, if you don't call him by his name, he ain't going to respect you. He don't respect nobody no way, but he wants his respect. So call him by his name. It's like calling him a MF or it's like calling him a, a bastard. It's like calling him any, you know, just like we cuss at each other and call each other out our name. Yahweh feel the same way if you call him out of his name. Don't call him Jesus Christ. And don't call him God and Lord. We got that right in the Bible. Don't call me no more bell. Get that for me, Tim. And uh, he said, call him no more Lord. Because, you know, Lord is not a name, no way. It's a title. I got a title. My, my title is Mr. But if I say, well, all the misters, please stand up in the room. Guess what? All of them going to stand up. Until I say, Mr. Underwood, will you please stand up? And Mr. Welch, will you please stand up? See? Call him by his name. The man respect you. And he try to be obedient to what the situation is. <laughs> I'll just say it like that. And so that's why I'm so grateful that I can see those things. The whole world can't see that. You know, this is his name forever, and this is his memorial unto all generations. That's what he said. And it ain't changed. This is part of forever. You know, just to give some natural examples, you know, I mean, we talk about uh, Adam and Eve and uh, Noah and Abraham and stuff. You know, those things apply to us, too. We're going through the spiritual part of that. You know? Yahweh told Abraham to slay his son. He was obedient and was going to do that. So we understand now that Isaac wasn't going to get uh, sacrificed at that point because Joshua hadn't came in yet. Yahshua was going to have to come through Isaac. You know, and without, and if he had a get killed there, it wouldn't have happened. Just like if Adam and Eve had to cannot eat up here, <laughs> if I could say that, <laughs> you know. They never would have got kicked out of the garden and was fruitful and multiplied and, fin and replenished the earth. Okay, can I get that scripture for you uh, that I asked for yeah, about it's, uh, Hosea 2 and 16? Hosea 2 and 16. And it shall be at that. I'm sorry. Hosea 2 and 16. And it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh. That now this is Yahweh talking now. It's going to be in this it's going to be in the day. Read that thou shalt call me Ishi or Ishi Ishai, okay? And shalt call me no more Baalai. Baalai and it should have a a little footnote at the, at the bottom there. Yeah. What do Baal mean? What does it say down there? My lord. My lord. So it says, call me no more my Lord. It says that in the Bible. I didn't write that. So that, that's enough proof for me. I don't know about to the world. Just reading it like that and then hearing Yahweh's name expressed all over this world and this universe. 
Because the sun even typifies him. That's a powerful ball of fire up there in the, in the earth, up in the, up in the uh, sky there. You know? And this one right here is only a typification of this one right here, of Yahshua. That's in you. You think this one is hot right here. This one right here can hold this one in his hand. And they say nobody can get close to the sun. This right here is only a type and shadow of this one. It, we express this one being a type and shadow because this is so hot and it's illuminating and it helps things grow and it helps, you know, the seasons come and warm the earth up. Well, Yahshua would do the same thing in you. He lights you up. Is that right? When we finally get the hint, and the understanding, he lights you up. And it's a beautiful thing. We walk through this earth, folks. We walk through this earth like I just use us, for example. We know Yahshua. And we take it for granted. We do. Because you know why? We don't see him with these eyes. But see, you got a big eye up here in your brain. That when you understand something, you even say it from a natural standpoint. Oh, I see. I get the point. You're seeing spiritually so. And that's only if the Heavenly Father give you his knowledge and understanding. And he set it up for us to get it through another man. Because that's how Yahshua came in. He came in through the lowly, stinking flesh. Without sin. Without it. Only one I know that didn't have sin. And he's the only one I know that resurrected out of the death hell in the grave. And I know he did because he resurrected in our mind. And that's the only way that I'm up here explaining this thing. The best of my ability. Thank you, Yahshua. You know, in this world, this, this room is really packed. It's really packed. You don't see the angels around here. You don't see them with these eyes. That boy can't stand us preaching the gospel. He can't stand it. So I'm going to take my opportunity to burn him up some. That's the only way to get him. It's through Yahshua the Messiah. Preaching the gospel. Can't do it no other way. And so, we don't see it. We don't see it with these eyes here, but we see the fight. And that's why the world is so corrupt. They won't listen to Yahweh. They won't take, a, take heed. Well, some people might say, well, look at all the stuff that's happening to you. <laughs> well, guess what? It ain't because I did anything wrong. 
It's because Yahweh planned that way back here that I was going to go through this. And thanks me to Yahshua that he's in me to keep me standing strong and be able to come to class and appreciate Yahshua. You just wish the whole world could understand this. It's so simple. And you just can't, you just can't think you're going to, oh, I'm coming in and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to get it right now. No, I'm sorry. He's going to give you a good beating before you understand anything. He's going to give you a good beating, especially if you're not obedient. He'll give you a good beating. Anybody know what a good beating is? One that your father get or your mother get at you from a natural standpoint. Boy, didn't I tell you? Now, I didn't told you. You stand up right and you don't say, you know, and why are they whooping you? They talking to you. That's how Yahshua would do us. See this right here? This is all one piece. And it represents your brain. And this piece right here, they took hammer, little hammers and uh, little tools and beat this thing this way. They beat it this way. This is, and they had to form it this way, the way Yahweh wanted it to be formed. All these little fine-tuned little gristles right here. You know, on the wings. All of that stuff had to be beat in shape. He's going to do you the same way. It's a good beating. Isn't that pretty? It's a pretty thing when you understand it, too. Even if you might not understand everything when somebody get up here. Yahshua will want you to hear it. Hey, if you don't understand it, Kind of like put it on the back burner, and when you need it, Yahshua will bring it back to your, your, your remembrance. That's what he do. And it comes from just sitting here. Sitting here and just paying attention. We got something that the whole world is looking for. They don't even know what they're looking for. You know, I'll be trying to strike up conversations. I don't be like, and I'll be preaching the gospel. They just don't know. Because I, I, I was talking to this, uh, this guy last week, and I was talking to a girl this week about the same thing. And I said, you know, we got to, where are we from? Where are we from? I mean, we, got, we don't even know where we're from. I was talking to her like I didn't know. And she was like, yeah, that would be nice to know, wouldn't it? She said that. So I know everybody feel the same way. We would like to know where we, where we came from. <laughs> and I ain't got into the gospel with them. I'm just striking up stuff so they can make them think. And maybe they'll ask me something. You know? And both of these people said the same thing. Well, that would be nice to know, wouldn't it? <laughs> where we came from. Because we just under a we just under a thumb right now, under a foot, and we don't we like from out of space somewhere, don't know where we even came from. Where are we from? And where are we trying to get back to? We're trying to get back to our home. From where we came from. We came from pure spirit. That's where we came from. We're trying to get back there. And the way to get back there is through the blood, the water, the spirit, and the 40. And through Yahshua the Messiah. The deaths, burials, and the resurrections that we go through every day. To recognize that. The world don't even know they go through a death, burial, resurrection. They don't even know it. But they know they 
It's like they feel captured. They don't even know how to, where they going. It's no way of escape. And I would feel the same way if I didn't know Yahshua. That's a scary thing. To not know where you are and don't know where you're going. That's a scary thing. So we are blessed because we know where we are. <laughs> and we know where we're going. We know in our heart. Because we love Yahshua. We love him. Not on the, we love him inside. That's where he is. Because if he's on the outside, you're in pretty bad shape. That means you won't be able to breathe. Because remember, he is your very breath of life. We all just did it. We breathe his name. And you can really hear it good if you get somewhere by yourself or get to running and get tired. You hear yourself. <sighs> Your heart get to beating real fast. Ain't that right, Corey? And I tell you, it's just a beautiful thing for your kids to just, you know. To just love Yahshua. That's, you know, it's Yahshua's inheritance to us. But it was my responsibility to pass it on to my kids, which I did. And those that took heed. It's going to be their inheritance also. Because it's the only inheritance I had to give them. And I get that from Yahshua. And it's eternal life. And so I hope somebody got something out of that. I just had a kind of like a worldly kind of personal kind of like trying to put it to the pattern. A whole life existence. You know, I mean, because we do talk about the, them guys back there, Abraham and them. We're doing the same thing, folks. Have faith in he took, he, Abraham had so much faith he was going to kill his own son, being obedient like Yahweh asked him. And he did all of that and let us recognize things that was going on back then so that it's ammunition to us. So now we can put that in our everyday life, you know, and we do lay ourselves down with this gospel. We lay ourselves down. So with that, I hope somebody got something out of it. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Our next speaker for this evening will be Dr. Tina Pettigrew.
Good evening. Uh, let's see here. Happy to be here. Um, hold on just a second here. Got a little feedback coming out of the speaker or something. All right, so anyway, I enjoyed the words of the previous speaker. Um, it is uh, definitely humbling, and he didn't even, see, Yashua will speak to you because he didn't even hear what's going on on the other side of Ustream. There's a few songs that were playing, Peace Be Still, and I Won't Fall Away. And these songs really touch you and bring um, an appreciation for being able to know something about Yahweh. And um, welcome to the visitors. Um, I thought it was amazing. The part that struck me about what the previous speaker was saying was that when he asked somebody a question um, about them, um, How would you like to know where you came from? Or what was the question? Wouldn't it be nice to know where you came from? Well, <clears throat> in this school, we actually learn to understand exactly where we came from and that uh, the first stories that we hear about are the stories about Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham and Moses and the Ten Commandments and we heard about Jesus. We heard about different things. I mean, Peter and Paul and the, the, the dinner, the Last Supper, you know, we heard about these things before coming in here and, under, and actually being introduced properly to the way that Yahweh really does exist. Now, the previous speaker was talking about the true names of our Heavenly Father, which is um, we were told it was Lord and God and Jesus Christ, but we come to find out that um, Jesus, when he walked on the earth plane and did all the miracles and talked to the multitudes, that Jesus Christ was not his name. And that um, we come to find out that his name was transliterated into our language a certain way instead of just brought over straight over. Now, there are many people in our past, like, I don't know, Christopher Columbus, have you heard of him? Um, George Washington, have you heard of him? Um, different people like that, that when they transfer into a different country, their name doesn't change. You learn in English class that it's called a proper noun. And is it a proper noun? I don't remember. <laughs> it's a proper noun. So if I go to a different country, my name is still going to be Tina. And in all through time, it's still going to be the same name. So we've learned that we were deceived about that. Now, we also learn about these, these stories that Adam and Eve, you know, um, Adam and Eve, well, Eve ate the, of the fruit, right? And then we all got in trouble because she bit the apple. Is that right? Well, we come to find out that, that the, these stories are not about men and women, okay? They're, they're about Yahshua the Messiah. This is all pointing to our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who we thought was named Jesus Christ who we th thought was our God, which he is our God. He is our Lord, but he has a name, and his name is Yahweh. It's like the moderator said, through Elohim, through Yahshua the Messiah. It's one name. Almighty Yahweh, I'm sorry, Yahweh who exists is almighty Savior, you understand? And it's only by through Yahshua that we are to be saved, okay? 
but he gave that law to the Jews, okay, where we read about the um, children of Israel and Moses. See, Moses was born under a death decree. We find he was born under a death decree. And we come through these stories and we understand that, wow, uh, and Adam all died. Uh, okay, and then you have the story of Noah, you have something happen, there's some, so, something, you're gonna see something about a death because it's all following a certain pattern and plan that he set up from the beginning so that we might understand something about him as an assurity. Now, I was thinking again today about all the distractions that we have. If we had to live outside in this cold weather, um, you know, without buildings or whatever, Maybe we would and didn't have a TV and a car and these different things. We might be the way they were back in the, in, back in the day, worshiping the sun god or, you know, trying to, trying to figure out who our creator is. And what a beautiful thing that we can come here and know something about him for a surety and know that we're not just here haphazardly. Things are not haphazardly put in place, but that they do follow a definite and de definitive pattern, which is him. Okay, so I, I'm, okay, so we were talking about Adam and Eve and the biting of the, ap the, the apple, and we were talking about Moses. So let me take a breath, and let's pick up, um, I wanted, I was looking at uh, James, I think the second chapter, just Write that down for later on, because there was something in there that I wanted to touch on, James, the second chapter. But um, let's go over to Genesis. Um, let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus, okay? Um, the first chapter, and just um, read there. Again, these scriptures are talking about our creator. We thought they were talking about us. And that, that's what we get caught up in thinking it's about us when it's about our creator and savior, Yahshua the Messiah, you see. Now, when Adam and Eve took the apple and bit it, you know, people say, well, there's people that will actually abuse their wives based on this concept. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because all women are sinful and are, you know, this, that, and the other. And they go home and they beat their wives. Uh, Overseas, they, they, um, they still have to, to this day, you know, walk so many feet behind. You know, they do have Burger King in Kuwait, but when you go in there, if you have a young boy standing there and a grown woman, it is that young boy that goes up in that line first, and that woman has to wait for that man. But see, these, these are the little boy, not even a man. And, you know, women don't have rights. Well, Spiritually so, we don't have that kind of right. It is the man that, um, who is Yahweh Elohim that is the life giver. And we as the woman, all flesh, man and woman, are the bride of him, do you understand? Or the woman who needs to just sit down, be quiet, do you understand? That's, that's in that sense, okay? But Uh, Yahshua is the redeemer, do you understand? And you have two spirits in operation, mm -hmm. and you have one that is the bride of badness or perdition or unrighteousness, and one that is the bride of righteousness and, and rest, and he's a provider and a healer, do you understand, and righteousness. So... In Yahweh, there is liberty, okay? But when you're in a unrighteous, under that unrighteous rule, there's, there's no liberty. It's uh, bondage, there's murder, there's accusing, there's all types of things going on. So go over and get uh, Exodus, the first chapter, please. Exodus 1 and 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to stop you. I got to go back further. I mean, Genesis, Genesis 15 and 22. Because, see, there was a promise that was made to Abraham 
with these children of Israel back here who are a type of, they were a chosen people. And they were chosen not because they were most, because they were the best, because they were the greatest, but they were chosen because they were the least and the fewest. It wouldn't do Yahweh any good to make somebody great who's already great, okay? He would have to take the least of them and show the power in his name, which he talks about later on. He takes the least, just like he takes that seed that looks like it's nothing, a dead seed, plants it in the, in the I'm saying he, he, does, he does do that, but I'm saying that, you know, it's from death, overcoming death that he is made. That's the power. That's his power. Okay. But anyway, go ahead and read. I said mean? Genesis. There was a promise made unto Abraham, who Abraham is a type of Yahweh. See this, see this promise was given? Give me 15 and 12, please. 15 and 12, ex er, Genesis. And yes. when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Mm -hmm. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Okay. And also that so, nation whom they shall serve. Excuse I me. So they made, he, there was a promise made there with Abraham back there that their seed was going to go into a land that they're, they're was not theirs, but they would be have to serve with great rigor, and they'd be in bondage. They serve them for a certain certain time, but after that, they would come out with great substance. Read. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. See, but that nation that they serve, Yahweh's going to judge. Read. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. Oh, I skipped ahead. So afterwards they're going to come out with great substance. So over and over you're going to see this pattern repeating of Abraham was a very wealthy man back here, you see, but his seed was going to go and be slaves unto uh, a people that was not their people, do you understand? But they were going to come out with great substance by a blood, water, blood, water, spirit, 40, see? So um, go back over to Exodus, the first chapter, skip down to the last couple verses and of one, and then we'll go from there. Um, All right, I'll pick it up with the midwives here, 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew wives, of which the name of one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to a Hebrew woman and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. Okay, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about the children of Israel after the promise had been made uh, from Abraham that his seed would go into bondage, but they would come out with great substance. You have later on the children of Israel that are down in Egypt, and now... Um, you have to pick up the verse where Pharaoh talks about why he's doing what he's doing. I think that's in the first chapter of Exodus. Um, the All right. Um, I, and I apologize for not. No, that's okay. Here. And there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. So we have a kingdom that's down here, okay? And we have a king that has arisen that didn't know Joseph. Okay, read. And he said unto his people, Behold, the children, the people of, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Okay, so you have them building treasure cities, and I think that's in Exodus as well. Um, in that first verse, there he had them serving with uh, lots of rigor. You know, lots of. Um, abusive, suppressive, prisoner-like terms. And um, this king down here wanted to keep them in that state so that what they can be, um, uh, build treasures for him. 
and they just were in slavery. They didn't really get much benefit from that treasure. They were just there to work. So, but these were Yahweh's people. These were a chosen people, and a promise had been made but that, that that was gonna happen to them. They were gonna serve with that rigor, but afterwards they were gonna come out with great substance. So this is part of that story. So it's the king down there. So now what has happened is Pharaoh has said, I want you to kill all of the little babies that are under two years old and under and throw them in the river because I don't want any of those kids to grow up and end up overtaking my kingdom, okay? And see, this is a type of the state of mind of that um, unrighteous spirit or that that will try to overtake, you know, what is truly Yahweh's, who he's the creator, and you have um, that satanic adversarial thing that is um, the creature. So go ahead and read, please where you're reading there, please. We were talking about. Uh -huh. uh, it says, come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. So and he it, says, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, right? And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also our, unto our armies and fight against us. So he's trying to keep a permanent position. He's trying to protect his investment long term so that nobody else can take over his position, which is not his in the first place. It is the creator's position, okay? But we're sh he's, he's showing us something to show him that it's not the power of yourself that these things are taking place. It's the power of Yahweh, do you understand? And he's gonna get his credit, just like he was talking about that sun. You don't see a whole bunch of suns in the sky that are actually producing life in our universe, okay? And we are so minute that it doesn't even matter whether there's other, there's only one, okay? There's only one name given under heaven, given under men whereby we must be saved, you understand? Mm -hmm. Only one. So just like you have that one sun in the sky, you have only one sun, do you understand? Okay, so read please and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did- I'm sorry, go back to the train of thought. I, I okay. lost the train. Come on, let us deal wisely uh -huh. with them, lest they multiply, okay. and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, mm -hmm. and so get them up out of the land. Mm. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Okay, taskmasters, so they had like managers and supervisors, <laughs> okay, to make sure they did their job correctly, okay, right? And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities Pithom and Ramses. Uh -huh. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. See, Yahweh's promise, his word does not go out and come back to him void. Exactly what is said is exactly the way it is. Do you understand? He said what he said, and it's going to come back that way. Read. Uh, go ahead. And they, were, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptians... So they're made, being, the Egyptians are being judged, and, and the um, Israelites are being multiplied. Read. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Mm -hmm. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick, uh -huh. and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. Mm -hmm. And the king of Egypt spake to the mid Hebrew midwives. So you got the king of Egypt speaking to the, the, the uh, midwives, read. Of which the name of the one was Shipra, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, Mm. and see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. Mm -hmm. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Mm -hmm. But the midwives feared Elohim and did not as the king of e Egypt commanded them, mm -hmm. but saved the men children alive. Okay, so they saved the men children alive. So you got this death decree going out. The king of, of, is, of Egypt is trying to protect his position, you see. But this is all correlating to Yahshua Messiah, see, 
And he came in. He was born under a death decree, okay? But he came to redeem those that were under the law. But go ahead and read. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and saved the men children alive? Uh -huh. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for right. they are lively, right. and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Uh -huh. Therefore Elohim dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared Elohim, that he made them houses. See, the, they feared and had a reverence for Yahweh, and he made them great, read. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, mm -hmm. and every daughter ye shall save alive. Now that is just ludicrous, you know, how you could actually do that, you know, with a clear conscience. But that's before knowing anything about our Creator, that's the mindset that we all were in, that type of mindset, um, you know. If you, if you don't know better, you don't do better. If you're made to be something, you just have to, you know, because I saw a video of that, which, you know, breaks your heart. But when you, there's things that we do, we don't even know that we have done until that light has been turned on and you understand where you've been and where you've been brought out of, if you understand. So go ahead and read. Now, where are you at, Reed? I don't I'm in wanna... chapter 2, verse 1. Oh, now. you are 2, 1. Okay, yep. go ahead. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Uh -huh. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. So we have this baby being born. She hid him for three months because she, he was born during this death decree where all these babies were being thrown in the river. Could you imagine? having a baby during this time, <laughs> you know. Go ahead, read. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes. So she couldn't hide him anymore because he was probably crying a lot and he was loud. So they, so he just, she just made him a little thing and packed it with bull, um, slime with pitch and put it by the river's brink, okay? Not floating down the river, because it could tip over and then the baby would have the fate of all the other baby boys. Do you understand? So Yahweh has this all set in order. But go ahead and read, please. And daubed it with slime and with pitch mm -hmm. and put the child therein. Right. And she laid it in the flag by the river's brink. Mm -hmm. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. So his sister is watching to see what was going to happen with her little brother because she's... She's a girl, and she's old enough where she's escaping this death right at this moment. So she's just watching to see what will take place. And so what ends up happening is um, she goes ahead and um, go ahead and read, read it. The, yeah. And the daughter of Pharaoh came she down to best. wash herself right. at the river, mm -hmm. and her maidens walked along by the river's side. So th the maidens walked with her while she was taking her time in the river, found the baby, read. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Mm -hmm. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. Mm -hmm. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. See, I'm trying to stay back there, but this is all pointing to Yahshua the Messiah, you see. And he fulfilled every part of what you're reading about in this chapter back here. He fulfilled it. He came and fulfilled every, every part of it where it says, and the child wept. And you will try to figure out why Jesus wept, okay, or Yahshua wept. He fulfilled every part of er everything that was in the law. He set it up, fulfilled it. But oh, he found this child in the rivers, okay. The child wept, okay, read. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter. So they find somebody to feed the child. Okay. The mother breastfeeds the child. Okay. So let's skip on down. We got to go down just two verses. Um, okay. 
And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse her for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Okay. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name so, Moses. So we have um, Moses, who was drawn out of the water. That's why they named, their mm -hmm. names had meaning. Just like Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua have meaning. Every book of the Bible has a meaning because they named their children with a meaning behind it. Even though we might name our children with meanings now. Um, okay, but he was, he was brought out of the, the water. You know, we got different names today that really don't have any meaning. <sighs> you know, Hennessy. Jesus. Blue Ivy, Chiquita, whatever. Um, just, okay. Sorry, Beyonce. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Anyway, um, read. Okay. It, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting so a Hebrew. We had this promise that they would go down in bondage where they would come out with a great substance. So you have this man, Moses, being also a type of an intercessor because this is all going by a pattern. You see, you have this intercessor. Moses is being set up as an intercessor, just like Yahshua the Messiah is our intercessor. Do you understand? So he's being, he's being set up as an intercessor. He's been born in the house of his enemy, just straight up. It's Pharaoh. That's the type of, you know, the adversary himself. So he's being brought up straight up in the house of Pharaoh. His own daughter has the boy. And now you have the uh, intercessor, the type of salvation coming right down into this darkness and being lifted up. Do you understand? Go ahead and read. He looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So he's already intercessing. There's things taking place. There's fights going on. <laughs> fights. You know, he's, he's taking this place as a, of an intercessor. Read. And when he went out the second day, mm -hmm. behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. So you got two brothers striving. He kills the one, okay, hides him in the sand. And then they said the next day, he goes out the next day, and he says, how is it that uh, you know about this? Are you, the, are, you gonna, are you going to kill me like you killed a guy yesterday, you know? And Moses was like, oh, my gosh, I got to get out of here because... This thing is surely known, okay? So he flees out, and go ahead and skip down a little bit, a couple more. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, right. and he sat down by a well. Right. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. So you got him again. You got this principle of seven. Why is he's going out? He's going into the well. He's going to the... And he's got another, you're going to see another principle of an intercession going on here at the well. Read. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Right. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. So you had, let me just go back for a minute. You had a, um, a death, a burial, and a resurrection. You had blood, you had water, and you had spirit. Okay, now you have him going out here. He's at a well. The shepherds are not allowing these women to water their flock. Okay, I don't know how they're doing it or whatever, but they're just not allowing to do it. They do this apparently every day because this particular day, Moses goes in and he goes and helps them and intercedes from them water their flock. So they get home early that day, and the father says, how is it that you come home so early this day? You understand? And so... Um, they said, well, there's this guy there, uh, Moses, who helped us and watered our flock. They're like, what? He says, go get that man. Bring him home so he can marry one of y'all. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. So they bring him home to um, Jethro Ruel's house, right? Mm -hmm. And so he works for him. So let's skip down a little bit. Um, do you want me to go right to three? Yeah, go to three. 
Three and one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, to yeah. Horeb. Mm -hmm. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of, a mi out of the midst of a bush. So there's a lot of principles that are in here that I didn't mention. But he goes to the, um, he's, at, he's out here working for his father. He has this rod with him. And he's at this burning bush this particular day. And go ahead and read. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So now this bush is burning with fire, but is not being consumed. Read. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Now he the said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight to figure out why the bush is burning but it's not being burned up. You Have you ever burned something and you catch it on fire and it just burns up and you have ashes? Well, this was burning and there were no ashes. It was just burning. It was not being consumed or there were no ashes, okay? So he's like, I must be seeing something. Let me, let me just take a minute and see what's going on. What happens then? And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush. See now, like the almighty Elohim called out from the midst of the bush, and he says what? And he said, Moses, Moses. Moses. And, and he, he says, said, here am I. Here am I. Mm -hmm. And he <laughs> said, draw not nigh hither. Right. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Uh-huh. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of now, thy father. Now he says, father. moreover, I'm the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, okay, who's Abraham's son, and the Elohim of Jacob, who Jacob's name was later on um, changed to Israel, and mm -hmm. he's, the 12, he's the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, you see. So he says, I am, I am the Elohim of your forefathers, you see. Read, the Elohim of Isaac, Jacob. Read. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to so look So he understand who this was. <laughs> this was the creator of heaven and earth. Read. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and now have that, heard their cry. That bitter bondage that was down there, he says, I've seen it. Read. By reason of their taskmasters, uh -huh. for I know their sorrows. Uh-huh. And I am come down to deliver them Now hold out. it. He said, out of this, must, when he's talking to Moses, he says, I am come down to deliver them, okay, out of this bondage, read. Out of the hand of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And to bring them up out of that land. Unto and a, he's going to bring them out of this bondage, this bitter bondage, dark prisoner, okay, where you're not having to build treasure cities unto uh, they didn't have to build treasure cities unto that king of darkness. Okay, read. And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and See, a large. he's going to bring them out of a land that's good. And it's large, do you understand? It has nothing to do with the treasures of the world, so to speak, do you understand? That puts everyone in bondage. Okay, read. Unto a land flowing with milk See, and honey. See, it's going to be flowing, flowing, flowing with milk and with honey. Read. Unto the place I'm not of talking the about milk from the cows and honey. Well, we'll just leave it on a literal level and we'll just let you have to do the rest. Go ahead. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites right. and the Amorites and the Perizzites. See, and now the up here in this land, he, the land that he's talking about, had grapes that how many men had to carry? Two men had to carry one grape. You can get a baby to carry one little grape right now. Do you understand? But there they had, they had to have two men carry one grape. That's the, huh? Okay, a whole bunch of them then, you know, a bunch of grapes. Two men had to, in other words, it was just abundant with fruit, okay, which is the wisdom of Yahweh. 
Do you understand? The reproduction is the, but anyway, go ahead, read. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. Mm -hmm. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. So he's seen it all, read. Come there's, now, there's nothing that he has not seen. Read. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring us forth my people. Now hold it. He said, come now, therefore. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I say, come here, Corey. Come here, Corey. Hurry, run. Come on, Corey. I want to send you, go see Tandy, and then tell her something, and then go, go back to see your grandpa. Go, go. Come now, therefore, and I'll send you. Mm -hmm. So now, that's what Yahweh's doing. He says, come now, therefore, and I will send you on the Pharaoh. Okay, go back to your grandpa. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> All right. Read, please. That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? So now after all this, you know who that is. He says, Who am I that I should bring them out? Read. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this and is the point, that Yahweh Elohim will be with him. And this is going to be his token when he goes down to this powerful man in Egypt. Because at that time, Egypt was a very powerful land. It's been destroyed since then. But it was very powerful. Read. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. Now, what? it's going to be a token unto you that Yahweh, Elohim, has sent you. That's your token. There's no way that people are going to be going up into what? Jamaica. <laughs> okay. Or different dangerous parts of different worlds just by yourself talking about I'm going to gang bust and do all this, these things. If Yahweh Elohim of the creation sent you, he's, he has the power to do all things. If he can um, raise a, a seed out of the ground and make it produce fruit or do, and do everything simultaneously, hold the planets in the sky in their place without them touching each other, rolling, you know what I'm saying? He does all things, you understand? He can certainly, this is the token that he is going to be with you. Read. I forgot where I was, sorry. I think um, it was. Uh, <laughs> I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. You shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And here's mountain. the point. When you bring these children out, you're going to serve Elohim upon this mountain. That's the point, to serve Elohim. Mm -hmm. Before they were serving the Pharaoh of, of Egypt, okay, a small land, and it was not flowing with any milk and honey, okay, but he's going to do a large. You see, there's a difference between the service of when you're, when you have a husband that is, uh, there's a uh, scripture, but you see, you see the darkness, you want to serve the husband of light. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yahweh Elohim, do you see here his bride, it's the spiritual bride? You see this sun up here? You see this crown up here? The Sabbath? That's rest. You're going to get some rest serving this Elohim here. I will be what I will to be. All right. The Sabbath, he's rest. This one here, there's chains around his head. There's a crown around his head. And she's, this one here is the god of this world. There's the moon. Now, what does the moon get? How does the moon receive its light? From the sun. From the sun. So this one here is just a shadow and reflection of this one here, when this is the true, this is the false. You understand? You see this sun, you see this, this moon, this one here is getting its light from this here. It has no substance or anything of it on its own, but it, it, it reflects the, the light of the sun, and it's the God of this world. See, you have a shepherd, okay? Shepherd leads. We had back here, 
that shepherd of Moses, you see. He was set up back there. He had to lead those lambs around, okay, and then lead the people, showing forth how Yahshua would come in. He says, I am the lamb, and he is the salvation. He's the door, okay? He's the bread. He's the intercessor, okay? He's all that in a bag of chips, okay? He's our banner, okay? Mm -hmm. You see, this is a, a shepherd who leads. This one is the anointed cherub, okay? Banner, mm -hmm. the bride of Yahshua, you have a murderer, mm -hmm. okay? Over here, Yahshua is a provider, do you understand? He provides. This one here, he's a man of sin. He ain't providing nothing. Healer, he can heal you. It's a power. It's a mm -hmm. power to heal. Over mm -hmm. here, you have a liar. It's a liar. You have righteousness. And you have the beast. And you also have a host down here at the door mm -hmm. who's a host. And this one here is a, just an accuser of the brethren. You understand? But anyway, go back. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them. So now when I come to the children of Israel who are in this bitter bondage, and I'll be down. Read. The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? Okay, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? This person who's supposed to be doing the delivering, what's his name? What am I going to say unto them? Read. And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asher Aya. He says, Aya Asher Aya. Read. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. I am has sent me unto you. And Elohim said, moreover, unto okay, Moses. Okay, hold it and go back. Uh-huh. Okay. It says, Aya, Asher, Aya. Right. I don't know which Bible you're reading out of, but it says, I will be has sent me unto you. I am that I am is a mistranslation mm -hmm. because um, the prince of Egypt was I am that I am. That's all he could be. But see, now... Yahweh says, I will be what I will to be. He goes on to explain and demonstrate what that means. To, to be, I will be what I will to be. Okay. So he says, I will be has sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. Okay, read. And Elohim said moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. Yahweh Elohim of See? your fathers. Yahweh Elohim of your fathers. Okay. The Elohim of Abraham, mm -hmm. the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. And this is my name forever. Do you understand? Forever. Through Alexander the Great, through all the, all the, throughout time, I can't tell you all the time. David can tell you all the intricate history of it all. But throughout all that time, his name has always been Yahweh Elohim. Read. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Right. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, Yahweh, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, mm -hmm. saying... See, he I, appeared unto me, saying what? I have surely visited you. See, I have surely visited you. And so seen that which is done to you in Egypt. done to you in Egypt. Okay. So then they go through this journey to come up out of here, out of Egypt. This is Yahweh sending Moses down here to do this. And it's in order to do this, it's by a specific name, a name of power, Yahweh being salvation. Okay. And that's really the beginning of, part of the beginning of learning something about your creator, knowing that he has a name, a true name, because if we want to worship the one who created us, we want to worship him, as it says in John 4, 24, in spirit and in truth. We don't want to um, use a lie or something that's been made up, because Jesus Christ is really a made-up, concocted name, um, where Yahshua is a, his true name. Okay, Yahweh Elohim Yahshua is his true name. And then we understand that he has a specific order to him, okay, um, according to the scriptures and 
the blood, water, spear, and 40. And so um, I encourage you to come back and learn more. And praise Yahshua. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pettigrew. Our next speaker for this evening will be our secretary, Dr. Janice Welsh. Good evening, class. <clears throat> Um, and I did enjoy the words of the previous speakers. Um, and I just want to go just over a couple things. Um, and the first speaker was, you know, talked about how um, <clears throat> things happen in our life and, you know, we get a little downcast about it. And it, it's not, like he said, it's not my fault. And it reminded me of Job, how Job was... Um, well, let's get it. Let's just read a little bit of Job. First of all, um, Job, and it's spelled Job, J-O-B, instead of Job. He was persecuted <clears throat> terribly by Satan. And it was Yahweh who pointed Job out to Satan. And um, as you read along, um, as soon as Yahweh gave Satan permission, and he had to have permission to do it, Satan got in there immediately and just started messing up Job. He took away his children, his money, everything, because Job was a very wealthy man. Um, they said a man of the East. And then these things were just snatched away from him. Now, um, do you have it? Yeah, Job, what, what chapter? Just start at Job, the first chapter. And I'm just going to go through that a little bit and then move on. Because, Job. <clears throat> go ahead. Job, chapter 1. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the land of uh, Uz. In, in the man of, land of Uz or Uz. Whose name was Job. His name was Job. And Job, the name Job means persecuted. Now, nobody in their right mind would name their child persecuted. Because why would you want your child persecuted? But that's what his name meant. Read. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared Elohim. Now, he was different. He was perfect and upright, and he feared Yahweh Elohim. Read. And eschewed evil. And he shunned evil. Read. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Okay, now seven sons and three daughters, just as the law had seven Laws on one side and three on the other. Read. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 7,000 camels mm -hmm. and five, five thousand, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household. Okay, Hold. the man was paid. Read. So that this man was the greatest of all men of the East. Of the East. He was the richest man in the East. Okay, read. <clears throat> and his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day. Okay, I'm going to kind of cut this up short. The, the point is, is that Satan was shown Job, and he immediately attacked him. And then he was told that he could attack him basically again, but he couldn't touch his soul. And the thing of it was, in all of this, that Job never cursed Yahweh Elohim. He understood that. Yahweh brought him into the world with nothing. He's going to take him out with nothing. So Job was, um, was persecuted, and Yahweh pointed that out to him. But in the end, after all that persecution, Job had three friends. And that's when he said, people will try to say there's something wrong with you. Those three friends sit there with Job day and night, and they tried to get him to admit that he had done something wrong, and that's why Yahweh sick on him. 
But no, not so. And if you look at the story of Job and you look at it as somebody being persecuted, you got to understand that it's not that Job was being persecuted for no reason. That was a type and shadow to show you what would happen with Yahshua the Messiah, that he would be persecuted and, and wrongly treated and put on the cross to die. And basically at the end, when Joseph or Job, um, he, Yahweh gave him twice as much as he had before. Those children, he, they were, he got new, he got new children, if you could say it that way. So he ended up with much more than what he started off with. Just as Yahshua the Messiah was hung out on this cross and beaten and persecuted, and then he, he died, he was buried, and he resurrected a glorified body, much better than that physical body that got beat down. Now, the other speaker was going through the story of Moses, and there's principles in the story of Moses of what happened. And she was talking about how he was born under a death decree. And then his mother put him in the flags by the river's brink. And then he was rescued by the princess. So if you look at that, there was a principle of a death because there was a death decree. And he was buried in that ark by the water. She put him by the water. And then he was resurrected from that death state by the princess taking him or having compassion on him. So there was a principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And that's just going according to this tabernacle pattern that had those principles of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Now you, in your own life, go through these principles of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Why? Because like the first speaker was saying, there's manifold manifestations that our Savior died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again, it says, again, the third day. Not any kind of old way, but he did it according to the scriptures. Now, um, there, she talked about Adam and Eve being in the garden, and folks, there was no apple in this garden. You don't read apple in the Bible. It says they ate of the fruit that was in, in this garden. Once they ate of the fruit, that caused their death. And then here you see this picture of Adam. His face is covered. He's in condemnation or he's buried in condemnation. There's a principle of a death, a burial. And then the resurrection would come later through the childbearing, which would be the Messiah. So there's a principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And then when you look here on this plate, it's got um, Noah. Now Noah was given a vision to build the ark because Yahweh said, the end of flesh has come before me. Now once he said it, it's done. But what he did was, it says that Noah found grace in Yahweh's eyesight. So what Noah did, you see this picture here, this angel is giving Noah the instructions of how to build this ark. Now, there was a, a principle of a death because the whole world died in that flood except for those that got into this ark. And then there's a principle of a burial or water because guess what? When the flood came, it covered the whole entire earth. So that's a principle of a death, a burial, and then the ark rose upon the water. So there's a principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Why? Because Yahshua died, and he was buried, and he rose again for our salvation. So you'll see these principles over and over and over again. Now, if you go here and you look at Isaac, Abraham had a son named Isaac, and Yahweh told him of all things to sacrifice his son. So Isaac, or Abraham being obedient, he takes his son up Mount Moriah, and he's prepared to sacrifice him because he's being obedient. Now the thing was, was my question was, why would this man go and kill his son? 
Well, Isaac was given to Abraham in his old age. It was a miracle that he, we call it a miracle, but even in his birth, come, even him coming about, Sarah, his mother, was too old to have kids. And here, he is, she is pregnant with Isaac. So Abraham, having faith that Yahweh would give him a son in his old age, now he, Yahweh tells him to go sacrifice his son. So he does it, but in Abraham's mind, He's thinking, that's why you see this picture here where Abraham is receiving his son because Yahweh promised him this son and he knew that if he had to kill him, that Yahweh was able to raise him from the dead because this was the promised son. Now, so there's a principle of a death. He had Isaac dead and buried in his mind and he also had him resurrected. Why? Because Yahshua the Messiah is going to come in. He's going to die. He's going to be buried and he's going to resurrect. Now, you look at these principles and these principles go on and on and on forever in the Bible. But let's look at you. Yahweh doesn't just leave the things in the Bible. He puts his witnesses everywhere. Now, Tomorrow morning, y'all probably going to get up and be looking all dreary-eyed when the alarm clock go off and like, oh, no, I could just sleep for another hour. But you can't. You got to get up. But what happened is you lay down in the bed, and they say sleep is the closest thing to death. And then you cover up in them covers. And I know you covered up in the covers last night because it was like 15 below. I, I didn't have just one cover. I had me a footy, keep my little foots warm. Then I had another blanket. And I said, Terry, could you please put this other blanket on me? Because I was too packed down to move my arms <laughs> to pull the other covers over. So there's a principle of a death with this sleep is the closest thing to death. And buried in those covers, and then you resurrect or you get up out of that bed in the morning head first. So right within your own physical body, there's a principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Now, how many times do you do that? <laughs> Every day. And if you try to skip a few days, what will happen is you are not going to be happy. You're going to be irritable, and that's the, you know, you talk about Michael Jackson, that was his problem. He couldn't sleep. He did everything he could to go to sleep because your body needs to go through that principle, just like this tabernacle pattern of that death, a burial, and a resurrection. Now, is anybody planning on eating anything tomorrow? <laughs> Every day, three times a day, and snacks included. Now, now, that's how I eat. I, I like a lot of food. Now, <clears throat> when you eat that food, let's say, I'm gonna use chicken. I don't eat chicken, because I'm more vegetarian, but it don't matter. If you pluck a tomato off the vine, you done killed the doggone tomato, all right? It's, it's dead, because it's pulled from its life source. But I'm going to use a chicken in particular because, um, because of the blood. Now, when I they don't do this anymore. Y'all go to Kroger and Meyer and pick out a nice little chicken, and it's all cut up and cute, and you take it home. You don't know where that thing came from. When I was a kid, I was aghast <laughs> at how they used to get our food. My grandmother would go out in the yard, pick a chicken. Boy, she went. Y'all, people today try to be so, I don't know, bougie. She would take that chicken and she would do what she'd call wring his neck. If you heard people say, I'll wring your neck like a chicken. They mean that. They used to wring them little chickens' necks. Um, and then they would cut the head off. So there's the head. And then the chicken, 
<laughs> chicken would be running around like this and blood squirting all over the place. And I'm like, oh, you know, I was, I was really terrified at the process. Okay, so the chicken bleeds out. Then they dump the little chicken after it's dead in hot water so that the feathers come out because you can't eat chicken feathers. You don't see chicken feathers on the, feather, on the chicken when you go to the store, do you? They pluck, sometimes you might find one or two. They didn't do a good job, but they have to pluck it. They have to gut the chicken, but there's a show of a, of a lot of blood. Now, I was upset with what I saw until they got out the flour and they put the little chicken and cut it up and made a little fried chicken. <laughs> And you start eating that bad boy, and you're like, mmm. In fact, the best chicken that I ever had in my life was a chicken that they got out of the yard and wrung its little neck and let it run around like crazy, and then you eat it. This chicken that they have in the store does not taste the same as a chicken that's got his neck wrung. I'll put it that way. But the process... And, and there, is a, there is a show of blood or a death. Something has to die in order for you to live. That's just the natural process of life. Um, when you go outside and you see the animals running around chasing, chasing things all summer, something, they grab them and they eat them and something has to die in order for them to live. So once you eat that chicken or that chicken is dead and you eat it, it's buried inside of your body and it's broken down. So there's a principle of a death and a burial and it has to be broken down because <clears throat> if you look over here, there's a picture of the stomach and the stomach is designed to break food down. It has hydrochloric acid and you, if, if that food's not broken down or, or down to a smaller component, you, your body can't use it to live. So what it has to do, it has to turn that food up and give it what they call the acid treatment, just like the children of Israel down here in Egypt. When they were working for Pharaoh, like she said, they were given the acid treatment. These people had to work. Pharaoh had them working 24-7, no day off, no vacation. Same thing with the food. Once it comes down into the stomach, it's given the acid treatment. So the food had to die, whether it's a chicken or a tomato. It has to die and it has to go down here and be broken down. And <clears throat> so there's a death, a burial, and then once the food is broken down, it comes here through these small intestines and it moves and wanders back and forth through here and then the intestines take the nutrients from the food and those nutrients are fats, carbohydrates, and what's the, is it sugar? There's three of them. The fats, the carbohydrates, and the protein. Yeah, amino acids is broken down. Um, that's the scientific name for the protein, amino acids. Okay, now <laughs> you see the same thing that's going by this tabernacle pattern. They had the, the blood, you had the water and the spirit. The blood was where they had to kill the lamb and take the blood and they had to strike it on the lintel and the two side posts where they dipped the blood from the basin. Why? Why did they have to do that? We look at these stories and we think, oh, what a nice Bible story. No, they are pointing you to Yahshua the Messiah. They're telling you exactly how he is going to die. Not die any kind of old way. He's going to die for our sins so that we are redeemed and glorified with him. So he's telling the story before it happens, how he's going to die. And then they come to the divided waters of the Red Sea. That's the water or the death and the burial. And then you have the angel in the cloud. So you have, have death, burial, resurrection. They came out of this land of Egypt and then they resurrected into this wilderness of Sinai. And folks, when they were in the wilderness of Sinai, they followed this cloud 
And it says that they wandered around in the wilderness of Sinai. But no, they didn't really wander. They were led by the Spirit. Just like this food, it looks like it's wandering around in your small intestines, but it's going in a distinct pathway. And you have to have this process in order for you to live. That food has to be assimilated into your body. Now, um, that correlates with the children of Israel. They were being led by this cloud. It looked like they were wandering back and forth, but no, they were being led by the Spirit. So even in your own physical body, there's a process of a death with that food, it's buried inside you, and then you're resurrected. Now, a lot of times I know when you eat, you feel sleepy and you don't want to get up, but really, <laughs> food energizes you and causes you to live on. So you have that process there. Um, even when you go, all of it, that death, burial, and resurrection, it leads you right to, actually it leads you right here to Yahshua the Messiah where he actually dies on the cross. He's buried in Joseph's new tomb, death, burial, and then he resurrects a quickening spirit. Now that food that you took down, that chicken that you chewed up, does not look the same when it's resurrected in your body. It's broken down to the smaller components to give you energy that you can't even see or life. That's why you know that Yahshua the Messiah, he raised a quickening spirit. He did not come back as a chicken. Now, he did. He, I mean, <laughs> I'm getting our stories mixed up. Now, if you, I was thinking, if you eat that chicken and it stays a chicken, it cannot resurrect in your body a chicken. And you'd be like, gluck, 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 gluck. No, it completely changes itself. It's broken down into something that your body can use so that you can live. And that whole process that you go through shows you something about your creator, how he died, how he was buried, and how he resurrects so that you can live also. And there's many more examples. But with that, I am going to yield the floor. And uh, all praises go to Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. class. Class announcements are as follows. Classes are held every Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sundays. Back. This coming Sunday, let's see, yeah, January be our first uh, February. Yeah, there we go. Um, first fundamentals class for the month of February and that will start at 9 a.m. A reminder that the school is supported by our members. Pledges are due at the beginning of each month. Donations are welcomed and greatly appreciated. For either one, please see our treasurer. From the office of our public relations officer, you can now find us on Ustream, YouTube, and Facebook. You can also contact us, contact us at our website, lansingbible.weebly.com. All direct donations for the Ustream project are greatly appreciated. We ask that you please do not enter the room during the prayer, moderation, or scripture reading. This is a spiritual operation. We also ask that you do not bring any food or drink other than water into the classroom to help keep the classroom neat and clean. Um, we have a class picnic coming up. Sunday, July 13th, and we have the pavilion from 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Northside Chicago is having an event in April of 2014, and that is Friday, April 4th through Sunday, April 6th, and the topic is what is the only name for salvation and the 24th chapter of Matthew. Vanderkamp is also having an event 
And this is Tuesday, August 19th through Sunday, August 24th. That concludes our announcements for tonight. Let us all rise for the doxology so that we may be dismissed. I will be quoting the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. And let him hear it from miles around. Give it all your praise. So let's sing hallelujah.